The Book of True Life, Teaching 43 of 366. The Master teaches Wars, Hardships, and the Parable of the Three Wanderers. Divine Revelations, Mexico, from 1866 to 1950. The Lord says, Why do you feel fear in your heart when I come to you as Jehovah? If I am your father, then I am love. I am the one who gives you your daily bread. I am the one who guides your spirits and helps you get back on your feet after your falls. I give you strength in these moments of trials, where the elements of creation tremble from the thunderous roar of war. Do not be afraid. Strive for your elevation and fervor to revive you and bring you ever closer to the pain of your brothers, oppressed by fratricidal wars, so you may share the cup of bitterness with them. Elevate your prayers in silence, a call for peace, unity and goodwill among humanity. Your children will be called upon to take up arms. Allow them to depart, for they will not perish. From this day on, they shall be carriers of my grace, and they will spread the light of my doctrine among their brothers. In spite of all the evils caused by war, I do not want you to view the inhabitants of those nations as enemies, so that tomorrow you may see them as brothers. Today, humanity has united to unleash wars. Nations have been at war with one another, erasing boundaries and blending languages. It was not love that achieved this unification. It was hatred that produced these fratricidal wars. But I, who am might, will show you that I can unite you by using your errors. For when this battle has ended, men's hearts will be purified by the pain. Their thoughts will be illuminated, and they will be close to attaining peace. Blessed are those who have fought for and worked towards peace. Blessed are those who, having believed in my voice, took to the road and spread my light and truth along it. My spirit is deeply moved at the sight of humanity's pain. Its weeping can be heard in the heavens. Truly, I say to you, may my pain as the Father be transformed into a dew of grace and descend upon my children. Empty this cup of bitterness with patience and humility, for your weeping will be transformed into jubilation. If the Father were to ask you, right here and now, if you have fulfilled your mission on earth, if you carry the golden fruit of your labor in your hands, if you have loved one another, and if you have known how to forgive, you would have to confess that you have fulfilled none of these. If that is the case, do you really believe you have become worthy of hearing my word by your own merits? No, your spirits tell me. My people, entire eras have passed, and you are still spiritually asleep. Awaken and behold that you have not truly appreciated the life you have enjoyed on this earth. My voice has awakened you with love and tenderness, but do not consider this word a gentle lullaby to continue sleeping to, for the Divine Judge is present in the essence of this word judging each and every one of your actions. Do not belong to those who wait for my justice to afflict them in order to believe and awaken. Do not yet say that you truly love me. Wait, because when it happens, it shall not be your lips to openly proclaim it. It shall be your deeds. 
do not boast about your purity, and at the same time, attempt to hide your blemishes. Because in so doing, you would be imitating the hypocritical Pharisees. Realize that I am still coming as master and father, because if I were to come only as judge, there would be no place for you to hide, since wherever you go, my justice will be present. When you enter my presence, you will have to answer for this divine word you have heard, the one which you will see written down in your conscience. Can you not sense how the untiring spirit of Elijah illuminates your path, clearing obstacles and assisting you with the rod of mercy whenever you feel weary? Seek him, call upon him in your prayer, and you will feel his presence very close. He is the shepherd of the spirits in this third era, guiding you to the very gates of the promised land, the heavenly sheepfold. May your spirits be filled with joy, knowing that you have heard the voice of my divinity throughout three eras, for you shall be my witnesses once more. That is why I prepare you and bless your lips, so that tomorrow words of life may pour forth from them for the multitudes that are yet to come. Your faith has been kindled and enlivened by the miracles I have granted you. Miracles which you thought were impossible. For I am the way and the good path I have always shown you. When you follow it, you will confront dangers, temptations and obstacles. But in order to help you, I have given you the light of your conscience, a shining beacon to guide and orient you. Additionally, I have granted you a spiritual being as a guardian and protector throughout your lives. Do you believe you could lose your way if you took full advantage of these graces? Is there even a single child of mine that does not feel joy in its spirit while listening to this word? Truly, I say to you, it is a joy for me when I hear your spiritual voice as you elevate yourselves in prayer. Awaken your spiritual sensibility so you may delight in my divine manifestation which has passed by your spirits unnoticed due to a lack of spiritual elevation. Rejoice as you behold the spiritual valley, the same way you are amazed as you behold nature and admire its harmony, beauty and perfection. You discover that no being can live without another, and that all of them live united by the law of harmony. This is true in the spiritual valley as well. I have told you that as long as there are spirits that dwell outside the path of spiritual development, there shall be no peace or perfect harmony, just as if a few stars in the cosmos were to leave their orbits. What would become of the rest if that were to occur? Would not the entire universe lose its balance? If man were to obey my law and allow his spiritual and material nature to live in harmony, he would have a much more peaceful existence on earth. His life would be without difficulties, and his work would be no trouble. No sickness would scourge them, nor would they age prematurely. Spirits already exist before the creation of anything material. They came forth from me innocently, but in order for them to know from whom they originated, what their destiny was, and who they themselves were, I let them hear my voice, telling them, Behold, here is your God. I am your Father. I am the Spirit of Love, and even though you came forth from me, you must develop and understand this Spirit of Love. Live, wander, Realize and persevere in goodness, so that this voice you have heard may be an eternal light over your spirits. It is your conscience, and it will help you return to me, not anymore as newborn babies, but as beings who have acquired experience and developed their virtues, as well as all of the spiritual gifts I have given you. 
then you will love me, you will truly know me, and will live in harmony with all that exists. There exist beings that have never dwelt on earth. But when those who have sinned and suffered much in this world consider it unjust that some beings must inhabit this valley of tears, while others, close to the Father, have never known that pain, I say to you, even though some beings have never come to this earth, they have nonetheless assisted their brothers with the restitution from the spiritual valley. Today, the beings who dwell in the different valleys of the beyond live spiritually distant from the people on earth. But I have never placed any distances between the love of the brothers. If you only knew how close you are to one another. It was man who, with his materialism, has broken the ties that united him with all his brothers. And the more humanity descended into darkness, the greater its division and lack of harmony became. It has not only separated itself from its brethren in the spiritual valley, but even within its own world, it has divided itself into kingdoms, peoples, and nations, becoming more and more self-centered in the process. That is why the light of your faith has disappeared, and your intuition concerning the eternal life is confounded. Today, when a loved one departs to a distant land, you send him off with tears, for you know that, if he is a child, he may return as an adolescent, and if he is a young man, he may return as an old man. But you always cling to the hope of seeing him return and embrace him again, for you know that, even though you are far away from each other, you are both still on this earth. But when this loved one departs to the spiritual valley, and you see that cold, lifeless body buried beneath the soil, your heart feels pierced by a sword, for you have lost all hope of seeing him again. You forget that the spirit outlives the material body, and that you will embrace one another once both of you meet again along the path of development. It was necessary for God to become man in Jesus, to dwell among humanity in order for you to remember forgotten teachings. He taught you new lessons and announced that he would give you new revelations when the time was right. It was necessary for Christ, the Divine Master, to come to teach you the truth because humanity had begun seeking its salvation, its eternity, and its happiness in this material life, losing its seed of spiritualization in the process. Humanity has forgotten the existence awaiting it beyond this life. Those who did not enjoy satisfaction and riches in this life, who only shed tears, have cursed it and called it unjust. In their distorted view of things, they called their fate adverse and misguided. But Christ has brought you the light once more. To the dead, he returned the spirits that had already departed to another world. He liberated those who were possessed, and with all of these manifestations, offered proof to the world that the spiritual life exists, and that it is the true life. Even after his crucifixion, the Lord manifested himself in spirit before believers and unbelievers alike, once again as proof of the truth proclaimed by his word. Why do you forget about those who have left your world and consider them dead, even though they feel, fight, and live like never before? That is why I say to you that they are the ones who are truly alive while you belong to the dead. Soon you will weep over your lack of faith, just as you did in the second era, when, after the death of Jesus, you said, It was Christ whom we killed. He was the one sent by Jehovah, the one who came to deliver us from our sins. 
He was the true life who resurrected the dead and ascended to the heavens on the third day. Now that I have returned in spirit, you see me engulfed in mysteries, even though I have manifested myself in a most simple manner. In order to find faith among you, I had to materialize my manifestation and grant you whatever you ask. Only then have these people believed, because they have seen me, some with their spiritual vision, others through faith, and yet others through the light of their conscience. My light illuminates you in this era, so you may be able to hear the voice that calls you from eternity. I have come to re-establish the ties you have broken, the ties that connect you with your father and the spiritual world, so you may once again become aware of the harmony you live in, and that there exists no distance between us. When will men unite their lives through ties of love? When they have returned to the path of my law, where true justice exists. When they obey my law, which states, love one another. Realize, disciples, that those who have left this world are not dead. Blessed are those who bid farewell to the body they left behind on earth no longer seeking to return to it and relate their troubles to it, for it is no longer alive and cannot hear them. When the body dies, it is like a flower which soon wilts after it is cut, but its fragrance is like the spirit, departing and saturating the surrounding environment with its essence. In the second era, I told you this. Let the dead bury their dead. Today, however, I tell you this. Awaken one another to a new life. Tell them that, while the body decomposes on earth, the spirit purifies itself in the beyond. Death is rest for the flesh and liberation for the spirit. But may no one attempt to free himself by his own will meaning before the hour designated by me. Do not believe you will be saved by merely having a confessor by your side during your last moments on earth, nor should you believe that you will come to me through your repentance during those last moments, thinking that you have reached the end of your development. Learn to love, to forgive, and to bless your brethren throughout your life. Purify your souls with your deeds of love and mercy towards your brothers. Obey my law on earth as men of goodwill, and peace will enter your hearts. When your spirit departs from this world and enters the spiritual one, it will open its eyes and behold the life that awaits it with great joy. In fact, that life awaits all spirits, to liberate and embrace them with its love and light. However, in order to attain salvation, you must set out with the intention of fulfilling your mission. I bring you spiritual riches of inestimable value, because you are the heirs of my grace. If you take up your cross with love and travel patiently on your path, you will be with me on the last day and enter the true life where you will find the consolation and peace you have sought so much. I have chosen simple individuals to be servants during this time, thus offering you proof that this word you are hearing does not originate from a philosopher or a scientist, for you are unbelieving by nature. Because of this, I have chosen your brothers, parents, or children to be my spokesmen before your very eyes, blessed with my spiritual inspiration. I am telling you to study my word in its spiritual meaning, for the day will come when men and women who use my name will arise, merely speaking words of apparent enlightenment to you, and you must not allow yourselves to be deceived by them.
watch and pray. I am the sight that investigates and understands the suffering in every human heart. You feel oppressed and fearful because denominations point their fingers at you and criticize your deeds. Do not fear. Dry your tears and receive this consolation. Blessed are those who seek to communicate with me in silence during their tribulation, for I will strengthen them. They are not abandoned by me. Rather, I have sought them to bestow my divine grace on them. Elijah is guiding you in this third era, and as you progress along the path of development, you will feel closer to me. Hear my parable of this day. On a path walked an old man of simple and venerable appearance, carrying neither supplies nor a walking stick with him. Along the way, he met three young wanderers who were joyful and singing delightful songs. The old man came up to the first one and said, Wanderer, I am hungry, thirsty, and naked. Share what you carry in your supply bag with me, and give me a piece of your clothing. The young man looked through his bag and found neither bread nor water, and he did not want to part with his clothing. Go to my brother, he said. He can give you what you need. I have nothing to offer you. The old man approached the second wanderer and made the same request. This one looks through his bag as well and finds neither food nor water to quench the old man's thirst. Ask the third one, he said. He will be able to give you what I could not. The third wanderer, upon hearing the same request, searched through his bag, but his answer was the same as the others. I have nothing to give you. The old man felt distressed, for the thirst and hunger had weakened him. But seeing that the supply bags of the young men were empty, he said to them, How are you going to follow this path I have journeyed along, without knowing what awaits you ahead? It is a long way, littered with thorns and thistles. The fields are barren, there are no trees to offer you shade, and there are no fruits. The sun is scorching, and there are no rivers or streams to refresh you. The wanderers listened to the old man and said, That does not matter. We will journey onward. We are young and strong, full of energy, and perfectly capable of accepting the hardships of life. With an ironic smile, they were about to leave the old man, but he said to them, Wait, I advise you to find something to eat first. Gather what you need for the trip in your supply bags, so you may be able to follow this path without perishing. After having listened to the old man, they retorted, If you are tired, naked, and hungry, it is because you are old. The strain has exhausted you. You have seen many dawns, and the hair upon your head has become white as snow. That is why you are discouraged. We are young and do not fear life. The old man then answered, I was once young and strong as well. I sang as I traveled the pathways. I had energy in my body. But with the passage of time, I gained experience and learned many different things. I will show you what you must go through. Then, taking the wanderers to the top of a hill, the old man showed them the world. From this vantage point, they could see storms forming all around them, inflicting pain and destruction throughout the nations. The ocean waters invaded the land, and men perished by the force of the unleashed elements. The young wanderers asked the old man, What do we have to do with these events? To which the old man replied, What you see here, and which deeply concerns you, you will have to experience as you travel these roads. But they doubted. He told them once again, Look! and he directed their attention towards the Orient. 
There they could see the nations fighting one another in a cruel war. They saw mothers and children weeping, losing their lives in the battlefield, crying out to their loved ones during their final hour. They saw women mourning, weeping for their husbands or children that were lost, and they saw hungry and naked youths. After that, before their very eyes, a luminous spirit draped its mantle like snow over the devastated earth. A heartbreaking cry emerged, for wherever that spirit appeared, the lives of men were reaped, like crops in the fields at the time of harvest. The young men asked, What does all of this mean? And the old man answered, I show you the times to come, times you will experience. Finally, the old man helped them back to have them behold the unleashed forces of nature. Fire consuming forests and cities, epidemics engulfing men like mist, volcanoes spouting fire and burying entire countries beneath their ashes. The old man showed them the oceans where great catastrophes were occurring. While some bodies of water were drying up completely, others were changing their location. Last but not least, they saw four angels with trumpets appear on the horizon, announcing the end of time. The young men were overcome with terror. Then the old man said to them, Now I have shown you the events that must take place, and which you must experience. The young men, their faces turned pale, cried out to nature, but it did not hear them. And at that moment, as they wept with a heart full of fear and no solace, the old man spoke to them with fatherly tenderness. Do not despair. Get on your knees and pray to the Almighty. He silently extended his hand, and everything became quiet, calm and peaceful. The vision disappeared. They saw the light of a new day, and now that they understood that the old man had prophesied those events, they threw themselves onto the ground and spoke. Let us pray, so that the Father, the Almighty One may prepare our path, and that we may walk in His light until the end of our lives. End of the Parable My people, meditate deeply on what I have just told you, and open your eyes to my light. You are the three wanderers I have called and taught throughout the eras so you might become saturated with my wisdom and ignite your faith, so you might prepare yourselves for the path of life, and so you might reach the end and enter the spiritual life, where you will find my peace. In past times, you were not convinced by my word. When the Master departed, your spirits did not find peace. I have told you, Blessed are those who believe. Blessed are the men of faith, for they will possess eternal life. To those of you who are prepared in this era, I say, I am hungry and thirsty for your love. My children, you have not been able to communicate with your God due to your lack of spirituality. You have rejected the virtues I have showered you with, and you have lost your treasure. Now I tell you, receive the teaching I come to give you in the sixth era of Revelation. Do not seek the light for your spirits in the books of the world, for you will not find it there. Do not seek the answers to your questions in them, nor the solution to your problems. Pray, communicate with me, and I will answer your pleas. Even before you present your sorrows and suffering to me, the Divine Mother already prays on your behalf and offers you her blessings. In turn, she asks you to pray for others who suffer. She pleads with humanity to cease its ambitions, its wars, and to no longer shed innocent blood. 
Her loving spirit protects you and humbly waits for my will to be done. You bless and worship her as well, knowing that she is your inseparable companion in your days of peace and your days of ordeals. My blood was shed so that peace and justice might reign among humanity, but it has not truly understood me. Had you taken full advantage of that lesson, you would have attained a higher level of spiritual development and the light I have spread throughout the eras would be fully illuminating your spirits. You have not imitated me. I have taught you humility, and yet you are arrogant. I gave you the secret of peace and health, and yet you live in war and disease. I taught you to comfort those who suffer, and yet you do not feel the pain of your brothers. You have become cold-hearted and insensitive. Humanity, how greatly you have denied my existence as well as your gifts. Truly, I say to you that you are not walking on firm ground, but rather on quicksand, and this path will not lead towards the goal you were created for. Read and learn from the great book of true life which I have granted you. And if you obey its teaching, rest assured that you will reach me along that path. But remember, if you do not obey it, you will distance yourselves from me, and your restitution will be great indeed. Men and women, you who have lost your way and lack solace, why do you not strengthen yourselves in me? Do not call me an unjust father when you weep and suffer in your exile. Before you came to this earth, I announced to you that this world is a valley of tears, that it was not a valley of peace and reward. After all, the earth is not your eternal home. Blessed are those who weep, for they shall be comforted. My peace be with you.